Welcome to Latin Jazz Power On, the first ever live stream from Jazz Power Initiative, the Northern Manhattan based nonprofit organization dedicated to transforming lives through jazz arts education and performance. I'm Eli Yaman, your host and managing artistic director of Jazz Power Initiative. And I've been so lucky to live here in Inwood in Northern Manhattan for 24 years. This afternoon, you're going to get to know some of my dear, dear friends from the neighborhood, Annette A. Aguilar and String Beans and Stephen Okendo and his Latin Jazz All-Stars. We're gonna celebrate the magical power of Latin Jazz music and dance. Now we are sending love and strength this afternoon to the people of Northern Manhattan, many of whom have been holding the fort for our city during New York on pause by working in our hospitals, driving our buses and subways and delivering our food. Thank you. This is for you. So tell some of your friends right now, y'all, you're starting a watch party on Facebook or live on YouTube. And let's get busy with a mambo from a live performance recorded recently at National Jazz Museum in Harlem with our first co-host, Stephen Okendo playing trumpet and leading the band. Now I hope you have some room to dance because here comes Ron Khan Khan from the Jazz Power Initiative in Northern Manhattan. It's Latin Jazz Power On.
getting Jazz Power on from Jazz Power Initiative. And what an amazing performance from Stephen Okendo and his Latin Jazz All-Stars recorded earlier this year at the National Jazz Museum in Harlem. We're joined now by Stephen Okendo. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, Stephen. thank you for having me. Thank you for having me, Eli. All right, <laughs> man. It's great to have you. We've been friends for years. And, yes. Uh, it was such a joy to play with you at the museum and now have you join us for our first stream. So tell us about the band. I mean, what a, an amazing band, some incredible musicians. Yeah, this is a band that we put together between you and I. Uh, it, it had uh, Mr. Jimmy Delgado on timbales. We had Toby Rivera on congas and vocals, Alberto Toro on alto and flute, Miss Karen Joseph on flute, uh, Miss Jennifer Vissen on, on, on bass and yourself on, on keyboard, on piano, and, uh, what you say. Uh, that's right, and Jose Clausel too, right? Yes, Jose Clausel, yes. how could I forget Jose? Yes, indeed, <laughs> and we send our best wishes to him today. Yes, um, yes, So tell us, now this is part of your larger aggregation. You normally have a 19-piece Latin yes, jazz right. orchestra. I right? have a big band, yes, that, that consists of playing the music from the Mambo era. So we play a lot of the music from Tito Puente, from Tito Rodriguez, but then we also, I've orchestrated charts so that it, it, it's salsa tunes that are orchestrated for a big band. Um, and, you know, we, we have some of the greatest cats in New York to come and play with us. Uh, we've been at Mama Juana's Cafe in the Bronx uh, for almost five years, you know, playing on Tuesdays. So, yeah, it's been a And you while. arrange all the music for the band or what's your... Oh, I think we got a little frozen situation. Stephen Okendo. Stephen Okendo. I'm, yes, I'm okay. here. I'm sorry. <laughs> there you go. There you go. He's back. <laughs> Wi Fi. <laughs> he, said, he went, he said, let me go write an arrangement. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Because <laughs> you do a lot of writing, don't you? Well, I try to transcribe as much as I can, and I'm, and I'm really trying to force myself to write, you know. Um, you know, I've had a lot of great teachers, like the great Ray Santos, helped me out a lot. Um, who we just lost a few months ago, but uh, but I'm really trying to, you know, during this quarantine, this is the best thing to do right now is to really start working on uh, writing. Writing jobs. music. Yeah. Writing yeah. music. Now you're also very active as an educator, and I know one of the things that you do is co-lead the All City Latin Jazz High School Band. Mm -hmm. uh, with Latin Ensemble. Yeah. Latin ensemble. <laughs> yes. How long have you been doing that? How long have you been doing it? We've been. It was. It, it's almost four years already. Um, mm -hmm. Alberto Toro got the call uh, to put this program together, and um, he he reached out to me to to be a co-director with him. And it's mm -hmm. been a wonderful experience to kind of share this music and this culture with another generation of students. You know, um, and it's been a wonderful experience with those kids working with those. And kids. that's the first time. I know the city has had an all-city jazz band, but this is the first time to have a Latin jazz ensemble. Yeah, uh, th thanks yeah. to uh, Ms. Deborah uh, 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 Nitzberg, she she put that together. You know, she uh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. She made it happen. Fantastic. And now we're going to hear from your colleague and co-director Alberto Toro. Yes. Uh, how long you guys been working together? Oh man, I know I've known Alberto since I was in high school, but we didn't start working together till maybe. I guess uh, a little bit after college, so around 2000, 2001. Uh, no, we did a, a play at Pregones Theater, um, and that was the first time that we really worked together and bonded. You know? Fantastic. Well, we're so happy to have him from his home now, Mr. Alberto Toro, on Latin Jazz Power On from the Jazz Power Initiative. Yes.
first song that I played on the flute was entitled Bajo la Sombra Don Pino, a uh, Puerto Rican dance that written by Juan Francisco Acosta de Arce, uh, composer born in 1890 from San Sebastián, El Pepino, in Puerto Rico. And that is an important song for me because it's the first, one of the first solo pieces that my band teacher uh, taught me, uh, the Professor Juan Correa Lago. Back when I was studying in, uh, as a kid in Rio Piedras in Puerto Rico, I was growing up there and I went to a school that was from kindergarten through senior and I was very lucky to have him as a, as a band director. You know, he introduces to the song and says chorreao, he would compose music from, from uh, traditional music, he would make a band arrangements for, from traditional forms of the island, including plan and bomba. And, when I decided to study music, those are some of the foundations that I had. I, I, I selected the danza because it's one of the oldest forms that has like a classical element to it. So when you play it, it has almost like a European feel uh, because of the, the articulation and, and, the, and the form. I, the way I played it, I only repeat the, the sections once. It's supposed to be twice each time, but because of time restraints, I wanted to make it a little shorter. Um, and it's, 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 it's one of those songs that just brings me back to my first experiences as a kid and I still practice and, and, and always bring into, into my playing. You know, once I decided to move to, to New York and first to Boston and then New York, um, some of my, my great teachers that I had the opportunity that I had to work with and study with always used to tell me, like, learn the lyrics of the song, especially ballads and and boleros in Spanish. So, you know, they used to tell me that for the jazz standards, like, I don't know, Misty or, you know, Autumn Leaves, learn the lyrics, you know, because if you learn the lyrics, then you have a better idea how to phrase things. And I started thinking about that and I started, this, I started, uh, started transcribing uh, some of my favorite singers like Tito Rodriguez and, uh, and Ismael Rivera. And I used to learn these sonneros and I used to sing them with the clave and like, a, I don't know, like, Ya cantan los ruiseñores y ya se acerca de nuevo el día y para mí todo es alegría. You know, songs like that, uh, or Cachita. Uh, also, um, singing boleros also, like, it helped me a lot the way I... I used uh, play boleros like when I, I tried to learn the lyrics and it made me, you know, I'm also a singer now because of, I think because of that effort of trying to learn songs. So I used to do like boleros, like before I play them, like sabor a mi, like. Tanto tiempo disfrutamos de este amor. Nuestras almas se acercaron tanto así que yo guardo tu sabor. I used to just learn the lyrics as, as much as I could and, and, you know, through the years I developed, I never thought I would be singing, you know, I started playing more as, as, as a flute player, saxophone player, uh, and then the singing part just came, kind of snuck in there because of, of those experiences uh, of, of my teachers telling me to learn the songs. I don't know, so when I improvise and when I try to approach improvisation and, and applying that Latin feel or Latin jazz with all the different uh, uh, styles and genres that are coming in with that because there's so many, you, you know, like I, I played a danza and you have also from Puerto Rico the bomba, the plena, um, and then in, in Cuba you have the son and, you know, guaracha and all these different cha-cha-cha, all these different styles, but it wasn't until I came to New York that I, that I really truly understood that this music came from New York that it, it, from the efforts of Mario Bausa, Machito, Tito Rodriguez, and Tito Puente. Thank you. 
nombre es Luis Miranda. Es un placer estar aquí con ustedes virtualmente celebrando este Latin Jazz Power On eh, que está organizando el Jazz Power Initiative. Nosotros los Miranda siempre estamos con la música, con el jazz, los Bobby Sanabria, los Arturo Faro, toda la música latina y el Latin Jazz que nos hace pensar en la magia que nuestros niños y nuestras familias necesitan en estos momentos tan difíciles. Que Dios me lo bendiga. How you doing? My name is Akai Curtis. I'm here to talk to you about my thoughts, my feelings, and um, some of the general knowledge that I picked up throughout the years on Afro-Cuban jazz. Uh, to me, Afro-Cuban jazz is an umbrella term. Uh, it encompasses mainly two styles. Um, you have your mambo, instrumental mambo jazz, and then you also have your kubop. And both of these styles have been pioneered by uh, legends uh, such as Machito, Machiro and his orchestra, Mario Bauza, also Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Parker, Chano Pozo, and a lot of the bebop musicians. Uh, this is a very important time in uh, American jazz music in terms of the uh, fusion aspect. Uh, first time jazz has been fused with any other style of music, uh, this was the time. And it has a lot to do with the location of it being in New York City. So you had musicians uh, from Cuba that were already integrated into uh, New York music um, and New York jazz. And now uh, people like Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker were bringing this music into the limelight. This music was also pioneered and pushed by a lot of the mambo bands such as Tito Puente, Tito Rodriguez, and of course the Machito band on that side of the spectrum, the dance side of the spectrum. Still playing many of the same clubs the jazz big bands were playing and still adhering to a lot of crowds in terms of dance music. Um, so my influences include pianists such as uh, Lili Martinez, Perochin, Ruben Gonzalez, and also um, Arsenio Rodriguez, a famous uh, dress player from Cuba that really pioneered uh, the modern way of playing mambo music. In the early 1940s, there was a band led by pianist Jose Corbello, and he had uh, Tito Puente and Tito Rodriguez in it, and many other musicians that ended up being pioneers of kubop and uh, mambo jazz, instrumental mambo in New York City. This band set a lot of the tone for uh, tunes and how they should be played. Uh, I was introduced at an early age to um, musicians like Jose by the great Andy Gonzalez. Andy Gonzalez was a bass player from New York that pioneered Latin jazz in all types of ways. I use the term Latin jazz because it's not just Afro-Cuban jazz. He was into so many different styles. I know that because at one point he had uh, moved his apartment in New York City and he let me and my brother, my father of course, take his record collection and hold on to it for a few years. So we got a chance to see uh, what he was listening to and actually he used to come to the house almost every month 
and he would actually play some records for us and sit down with us and tell us what to listen to. One of these pianists he was telling us to listen to was Lily Martinez. He would show us music videos of things that we never saw before. This is before YouTube. So I was fortunate enough to be blessed with some knowledge by some incredible musicians, including uh, Andy Gonzalez. One of the things he had told me, and this is when I first started playing music and Afro-Cuban music and, and Kubop, is, is to try to really pay respect to the music and the composers. Um, I remember we were in the basement of my house and he was there and we were going over a tune that uh, he's both pioneered in Latin jazz style and in salsa. Under his band, uh, Conjunto Libre with Manio Kendo, he was the MD for Manio Kendo y Libre. And also he was uh, part of the Jerry Gonzalez and a Fort Apache band. Jerry Gonzalez is his brother. And they developed a way of playing Afro-Cuban jazz or rumba jazz that really hasn't been played like that before. Me and my brother were definitely in love with this band. Uh, we couldn't stop listening to the music, both of the bands, Libre and um, Fort Apache. So the song Obsession was written by Pedro Flores. And this uh, piece was played as a bolero or a, a slow, slower composition. And then eventually, uh, sped up at the end, or in some cases as a rumba, and then sped up at the end. I've played it different ways. Um, in the second section of the song, we would call it the mambo section or the montuno section, um, the piano player would play what's called a guajeo. The guajeo is a repeating ostinato that the pianist plays. Most of the musicians in an Afro-Cuban setting are going to be playing some sort of ostinato, repeating ostinato, and it's generally called a tumbao, um, on the piano, it's called a guajeo or a montuno. Now the tradition comes from the tres and how this is before piano was added into the band by Arsenio Rodriguez. So I used to listen to so much of this music. Um, I would actually play it on headphones just like I have now. And I would play along to the recordings for very long periods of time. I would play with my favorite recordings, even though I didn't know much of what I was doing. Uh, luckily, I had some people help me out and they would uh, help me with, um, you know, guajeo here and a guajeo there. And then I would kind of have to figure everything else out, you know, with my own ears. So getting back to our story, <laughs> I was in the basement uh, with my, my band or the band that I was playing with and we were practicing this song, Obsession. Andy Gonzalez was there, and um, we asked him, you know, what he thought. And one of the things he said to me I never forgot. He said, uh, the first thing a lot of piano players do is they play a lot of eighth notes on the piano. They play a lot of music, a lot of, a lot of notes. Uh, he said, but if you notice, some of the best guajeos swing the hardest when they don't have as many notes. So, it made me rethink how I was approaching this music. And so instead of approaching it as trying to play the most impressive way, I would try to, to find that swing. And this led me to listen to many great uh, pianists that have incredible swings on the piano, such as Eddie Paul Mieri, Peruchin, um, Papo Luca, Gonzalo Rubacaba, many great piano players. And I learned so much uh, from that and also keeping in mind all the other things that he would teach us about respecting the music and things of that nature. So, you know, I would like to give a shout out to my teacher, Andy Gonzalez, Maestro, who has uh, just recently passed, but he'll always be in our memory and we'll love him forever.
Latin Jazz Power On. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And what an amazing uh, visit with Zakai Curtis. And yeah, just uh, incredible. Zakai is a phenomenal musician, amazing <laughs> educator, and amazing person. Definitely. Amazing person. And he had these incredible mentors, including the late Andy Gonzalez. And what a magnificent tribute to Andy. Yeah, man, the great Andy Gonzalez. I got to know of Andy Gonzalez through uh, Carlos Enriquez when I was in high school. Mm. And uh, and then later on, I got to meet him playing with Tito, Tito Puente Orchestra. And I got to meet his brother, Jerry, playing congas at the time, who was wow. also an amazing trumpet player and, and, and percussionist. Um, but these guys, man, were really like amazing teachers to other musicians, especially younger musicians. Mm -hmm. um, and you really said they used to have a jams at their house and everything. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, as far as um, 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 Zakai and Lucas, they had a famous jam section in the, in the basement. Where even oh, okay. Marsalis and all of them used to go to hang out. Yeah, yeah. So I've heard oh. some recordings of that. Amazing. Beautiful. Well, we want to say hello to a few people listening to Latin Jazz Power On, including our friend Ruth in Venezuela. And uh, we have some listeners and viewers in Chile. We'd like to say hello to Rosa. And right down the hall from me here in Inwood, Mike and Susan watching and dancing with drinks at their home bar. So uh, <laughs> we also heard from uh, one of our great inspirations, Justin DeChocho. JD. JD. <laughs> yes, my old, old, all city, tri-state, Grammy, all American, one of the greatest teachers I've ever had. Katie. Yeah, wiggle and a jiggle and a wiggle and a jiggle. Yeah. And time and time and time is fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody understands that joke. <laughs> oh, man, he just had a way, he has a way of generating the spirit of jazz inside every student and get everybody to kind of groove on the same page. Well, you came up in Washington Heights, Stephen, and um, you also studied with uh, the legendary Sergio Larios. Can you yes. tell us about that? I, I met I met Mr. Larios um, through uh, through uh, a little tour that we did when I was in middle school. I went to IS143, and my first great music teacher was Bill Minnick. And Bill Minnick set us on this little tour to try to recruit kids to come to our junior high school. And in doing so, we went to 189, which was the school that Mr. Larios was teaching at at the moment. And I uh, remember he heard us. Where's that on 181st or? No, yeah. literally on 189th Street. It's IS 189. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. okay. So we went there and um, I think that summer he reached out to us. I don't know how we got our number, but he reached out to us and he did like a little jazz camp at his school. And it was the first time I was ex I was ex exposed to jazz music. My first blue skill, he says it, he taught it to me. The first jazz tune that I learned was Tune Up by Miles Davis. Wonderful. So, yeah, and then you beautiful. went to IS, and then you went to IS 143. Which no, I was down. in IS 143 at that time. I was. Oh, okay. Then I went to LaGuardia after that. Music and, and LaGuardia, art. and with Bob Stewart, and with yes. Justin Socho and Bob Stewart. Yeah. Yes, I had Bob Stewart uh, for my high school classes, and I had JD for my all city classes. So I would see him on Fridays, and I was in the all city jazz band at that time. He was my director. Wonderful, best, best, best of both worlds. Yeah. All definitely. right. Definitely. All right. Um, well, we've got coming up another performance from your band, uh, Stephen Okendo and the Latin Jazz All-Stars, Kimbara from the National Jazz Museum in Harlem. We want to say hello to all our friends from National Jazz Museum in Harlem. And uh, let's enjoy this magnificent performance on Latin Jazz Power On from the Jazz Power Initiative.
Jimena Salgado. I come from Peru, but I'm based in New York City. And I am wearing the costume that I danced when I won the national championship in Peru in 2015. That dance routine brought me to the US uh, because having to win um, you know, nationally needs me to uh, represent my country in the World Salsa Championship years ago. What inspired me to be in the Latin world? Um, well, many different things. I'm gonna start first with my family because they are definitely the ones who influenced me more, you know. Uh, I grew up every Sunday in the family reunions listening to La Sonora Ponceña, to La Fania, Celia Cruz, um, my dad is a huge fan of Poncho Sanchez and he loves Latin jazz. So every time he was giving me a ride to go to school or something, uh, that was what he was playing in, in, in the car. Um, so, you know, I had that music always being part of me, you know, all the best birthday parties in the family wear like salsa all the time. You know, after years of ballet, tap, jazz, singing voice lessons, singing uh, singing classes, uh, I, you know, I was obsessed with my ballet school. It's really strict. I started late, 12 year old late, right? Um, so I needed to like be super focused on that. Uh, but I, I got to a point, you know, when I was my 16 years old, that I couldn't handle that much stress. And if I would, it would be at the cost of my mental health. Uh, so I get a call from the national salsa team from Peru called Sao Cold Dance. I, they are my, my pioneer master teachers, uh, Carlos Vegaso and Karin Ayulo. They, they say, you know, uh, we are going to this world championship in the U.S., my entire perception about the dance world changed. The things that I wanted in my life, for my life, for my future, changed. I saw people from Tokyo, from Colombia, from Turkey, from Europe, like everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And that was incredibly moving just to see the hard work, the passion of everyone. Even people that are not necessarily, you know, like Latino or Hispanic, you know, people that are not necessarily from South America or the Caribbean. That was very touching, you know, the power of the music and, and also the culture of work is very different. You know, there is a sense of democracy in, in, in the rehearsal process, or at least that's what I've experienced. I, I had the privilege to have a to have a director that was always open to receive ideas and create together which is you know an extension of the legacy of how the music in, in latin jazz happens you know there is this sense of admiration and and uh respect for the other i uh remember i was on the line warming up getting ready you know waiting for my for my spot with my team and I, I don't know, I always had such, I, something always ha has to happen to me. So I remember my heel breaks, right? And I got super nervous because we are literally right there in the line to go to the stage, to perform our, our routine, right? And behind us, there was this Colombian team, right? That was in the same division than us. And I got super anxious. I tried to fix it myself. I couldn't. So one of the guys saw me with a struggle and he came to me and was like, oh girl, no worry. Doesn't need to fix. Let me see it. Blah, blah, blah. You know, and he matched it and smacked it on against the wall and we tried it and it worked. And I was so grateful because he literally saved me. Um, I will remember that forever. And, you know, that sense of camaraderie and generosity and kindness and, and, and th that, that exists in, in the Latin dancing community is something that I cherish so dearly in my heart. Um, plus, the impact that it had in my soul, in my spirit, salsa and Latin jazz gave me that sense of freedom and joy that 
it was so powerful that till today, you know, I have my dance company called Rumba Mena Dance Company and my logo is Freedom and Joy. My mission and my connection with with the Latin world, the Latin music, it's fascinating. And with Latin jazz, it's even more fascinating because I have, you know, both roots. I have my jazz formation, my, te my technical formation in ballet and, and the jazz dance form. And I also have my entire cultural influence of Latin music, you know, so those blend perfectly together. And, and my love and my devotion to this art form is going to be there forever. So thank you for having me and thank you for listening. Uh, it's my honor to share my story with you. So as I started learning how to play music, you know, gravitating to the trumpet, <clears throat> I started listening to trumpet players. And one of those trumpet players was Dizzy Gillespie. Um, Dizzy Gillespie uh, played a song that I fell in love with. One of my first albums, I bought this compilation and it had a song called A Night in Tunisia. It sounds like this. I remember the first version of that song that I heard was what I thought at the time to be the original version. And it's on a record called Dizzy Gillespie Afro. And it had the great Bobby Rodriguez on bass. Boom, 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 Nice, beautiful bass line. Um, and on congas, it had the great Carlos Patato Valdez, Cuban conga player. And I fell in love with the rhythm they were playing, which was an Afro 6-8 rhythm. Boom, ba -da -ba -da -ba 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 boom, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da And I was just so, I was so enamored with that rhythm. Um, years later, my father takes me to a concert. And it just so happens to be Tito Puente at the Apollo Theater. This must have been sometime in 1990. 1990, 1989, I was very, very young. I would say 1991, around that time. Um, I go see him, and he played that rhythm. And and, uh, and I started listening to Tito Puente. There's a, there's, a, there's a record in there that I fell in love with called Cuban Carnival. Uh, there was a song called Para Los Rumberos in that album, and it sounded something like this. Trumpets are up there. The speed is, is is blazing. The band is tight. It's a big band. I fell in love with Tito Puente as soon as I heard that album. And I remember as a kid, I used to pick up the trumpet and and try to practice those notes. So I was actually practicing my high notes, you know, which I I I, I try to play lead trumpet. So I was trying to play that. And a lot of my stamina and a lot of the way I, I learned how to play came from those albums, trying to play lead. Um, and I didn't realize that what I was doing, I was really trying to build up my chops. Uh, the first concert thing that I saw was the Apollo Theater um, with Tito Puente. And then I went to go see him at the famous 100th album concert at Madison Square Garden. That must have been 1991, because that's the year that album came out. And that was an amazing experience. I got to see the big band uh, uh, again, but, you know, it was at Madison Square Garden. The crowd, I remember the crowd screaming and, and, and being having floor seats at the garden. 
we, my father, I don't know how he got these tickets, but we were in the floor and we got to see this. And I remember I kept looking at the Jumbotron and seeing the lead trumpet player, Beto Rodriguez, and being, oh my God, that's Beto. Like, I knew who the trumpet players were. I was that kid. I knew who the musicians were in the band. And my father would educate me a little bit on them, but I always knew who the trumpet players were. Uh, or I tried to learn who they were. Um, and I remember seeing Celia Cruz there for the first time and being in awe of her. Um, they did a song called Celia and Pito, which is like the most amazing thing, where Tito solos and she scats, and he tries to emulate what she's scatting, and they go back at it. Yeah, oh my God, amazing arrangement by Jose Madera. And then, um, then I finally get to meet him. And this was maybe about a year later. Uh, my father said, Tito's performing at Summer Stage in Central Park. Uh, we're going to go see him. So I said, okay. And my father was very good friends. Unbeknownst to me, I found out that day that he was very close friends to the band boy. Uh, his name is Ralphie Balboza. And I remember as we were walking into Central Park, Tito Puente was driving on a driving a Jaguar and he was going through the park and I'm like wow that's Tito Puente like he was right there he just passed by us and he get he got out of the car and my father asked him can my son please take a picture with him he told uh, uh, Ralphie and Ralphie spoke to Tito and Tito was like yeah no problem I remember I was so nervous that I step on his white shoes. Tito had these white shoes and it just rained in the park. So we were on some sod and it was kind of wet. And I remember I stepped on his shoes and I was like, sh I was shaking. I kept apologizing. He was like, don't worry about it. Put his hand behind me. And I, that's the picture that you probably be seeing, uh, have seen or probably seen at this moment. Um, and that's how I, that's when I first met him. As a musician, that's something that we cherish. We cherish just being around each other and just sharing stories and, 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 and talking about the music. And, and you, you, you tend to uh, have more respect and, and appreciate it more. And, you know, me and a few other young, younger musicians, we, we are really trying to, we, we just want to we just we just want them to be proud of us you know that's the way I look at it I just want to and I want to share with the next generation that's something that me and mr Alberto Toro have been working on with the all city Latin ensemble is that we got we try to pass that pass that along those lessons that we've learned you know those experiences those stories like I'm sharing right now with y'all it's a story that I'm trying to share with my students um, and, um, you know, we're, we're trying to let them know how special this music is, especially coming from New York City, man. When you live in New York City, a lot of us take it for granted sometimes. We forget where we live, but the history of the city is so immersed, the cultures, you know, thinking of the Palladium, one of the first clubs that actually was integrated, you know, welcomed anybody. As long as you could dance, you were welcome. You were Jewish. You were black. You were... Hispanic, you were Indian, you were whatever, Chinese, as long as you could dance, you were welcome in the Palladium, you know? If you don't know how to dance, you go hang out by the bar. That's the story that I fear from the old timers. But it was all about love, this cherishing, this this brotherhood, this kinship. And and that's something that I miss right now during this time. I miss my, my musician friends. Um, we get to do these little, you know, live streams and, and Zoom meetings every once in a while. I have to be honest, I've done it with my big band. Uh, we get together every once in a while, at least once a week, and we get to just talk and, and share stories and see how we're doing and really care for each other. So, um, that's it. That's <laughs>
I'm Jerry Madera, and the song you just heard me playing to is a machito song entitled Asia Minor. It was recorded in 1955, and the bass player on that album is the late, great Nilo Sierra. What inspired me about this song is the bass line. Before I started playing bass, I was playing guitar, and I heard this bass line, I said, wow, what a hip bass line, so I started playing it on the guitar. Then eventually I said, you know what, it would sound better on a bass. So, I, you know, I was around 14 years old when I heard this song, and I was pestering my dad about buying me a bass, and he told me, you know, if, he, if, I'm gonna, if he's going to buy me a bass, my dad told me, if I'm going to buy you a bass, I don't want you to leave it in the corner collecting dust. I want you to study it. So he bought me the bass, and guess what? I left it in the corner collecting dust. I would like to start out with a brief history of my musical background. My grandfather, Simon Madera, who was born in the late 1800s in Puerto Rico, was a composer of danzas and ballroom music in that era. His most famous composition is La Danza de Mis Amores. Now his son, my father, Jose Ping Madera, came to New York in 1930 and he started playing with the different jazz groups and different bands and uh, he also began with the Machito Orchestra back then. And he was a composer, arranger, and the lead tenor sax in that orchestra. And my brother, Jose Madera, is a musical arranger and he's also a percussionist and he played for 31 years with the Tito Puente Orchestra. When I was a young boy, my father took me to Yankee Stadium where the Machito Orchestra was performing on the field. And it took, they took me on the field. And I was there among the band members playing. And that was a, a, a great experience. And I thought to myself, man, I would love to be doing something like this. My other musical inspirations, especially which led me to play the bass on a professional level, were Bobby Rodriguez, Andy Gonzalez, Sal Cuevas, Eddie Guagua Rivera, Guillermo Edgehill, Victor Venegas, to name a few. Those were the inspirations in my life to become a musician. I am currently the bass player for the three-time Grammy Award-winning Spanish Harlem Orchestra. I also play with various other orchestras, such as the Mambo Legends, I've also played with the Tito Puente Orchestra on and off. I've also played with the Machito Orchestra on and off. I've also done a few gigs with Hector Lavoe, Raulín Rosendo, and a few other artists, Eddie Palmieri also, Tipica 73, and a few other various artists down the line. I've been very fortunate to travel the world as a basis with different groups and having a chance to experience what other type of music there is out there in the world, which also inspired me to and develop the style of playing that I have now. Latin jazz, salsa, and the various other types of music that I have played throughout my career is to me like brings the world together. It, uh, there's nothing like music to really show people what kind of passions there are and what types of feelings and what types of joy that life can bring you. Latin jazz to me is that bridge to several different cultures as where well. they can understand the message that or the messages that we're trying to convey to everybody in the world. To me it brings me joy that I can communicate this type of music to the masses and to see how they react and their faces as they're dancing and enjoying the music. I would like to thank Eli Yemen and the Jazz Power Initiative for giving me this opportunity to express myself. Thank you very much. Power on from the Jazz Power Initiative, and I'm Eli Yemen, your host. I've been joined this hour by Stephen Okendo and the leader. He's the leader of the Latin Jazz All-Stars and a 19-piece big band that performs all around New York City. He's also a renowned educator and he brought us 
these wonderful artists in your band, Jerry's video, amazing, you know. And Jerry killed it with his video. <laughs> <laughs> he killed it. He made us look. <laughs> and well, thanks to his daughter, a filmmaker. And, yeah. Uh, thanks for her input. Now, I know you wanted to shout out to some some important people, Stephen, before you. Yeah, I, I misspoke earlier when I was talking about who was the brainchild of the Latin Ensemble. And that person is the Director of Arts and Special Projects, Ms. Elizabeth Guglielmo, who is right. amazing. She was the brainchild of this. And that's the reason why we have a All City Latin Ensemble. I also want to give a shout out to my staff and PPA students and Pelham Preparatory Academy, which is the high school we are teaching in the Bronx. Uh, everybody right. over there, I want to give a shout out to them. And you know, Bronx in the house. The, yes, <laughs> and the guys from my big band, I, I miss you guys. You know, Stephen O'Connor Latin Jazz Orchestra, and all my musician uh, sisters and brothers, I miss you guys. Well, thank you for the visits, the virtual visits that we've experienced from all of them. And uh, we are sending love and strength to the people of Northern Manhattan today, many of whom are holding the fort for our city during New York on pause by working in our hospitals, driving our buses and subways and delivering our food. This is for you. Thank you for your efforts. We give you music. We give you stories. We give you history. And now we bring you Annette A. Aguilar, a wonderful band leader, percussionist, a uh, dear friend for many years, an Inwood resident, formerly of Washington Heights resident, formerly of San Francisco. Welcome, welcome to our stream, Net. Hey, Eli. <laughs> Eli, and see, yeah. And I see you with all your percussion and we're in your kitchen now, right? That's, right that's how you get, kitchen. that's that how you cook. Studio. That's how you cook, you the a little bongo, a little, uh, a little. <laughs> oh, check that, this check it here. Actually, I got this check it. I got the second from Sheila Escovito, Sheila E. When All I was right. In high school. God, it's so All happy. right. That's wonderful. Well, I'm so glad you could join us. And um, we're going to be um, seeing your band in performance now. Wonderful performance of Meadows to get kick us off. Can you tell us about it? Well, yeah. Meadows is written by Weber Iago, uh, AK Weber Iago. And his name is Jazz in Zing. He's a great Brazilian composer from Rio de Janeiro. And uh, the piece is more like a, a setting of an Afro-Cuban, Afro-Brazilian, more of a cross between the, you know, the Yorubas because the Candomblé and the Santeria is connected with those rhythms. And some really great jazz harmony, only the melodic stuff that comes from Brazil is always very beautiful. And of course, with that setting and that groove, a great solo there by Ruben Rodriguez on the electric bass. And also our one longtime member on violin, uh, Rob Thomas, and uh, with uh, Benny Kineski on drums. This is a big band we have. We have nine pieces here. Benny Kineski on the bateria, Wilson Lafontaine for, on percussion, uh, Deborah Resto on vocals, Amy Quint on the keyboard, Eddie Venegas, who you'll hear later on violin and uh, on trombone here. And we're going to hear from a few of your band members uh, throughout this hour. So we're so excited. Welcome, everybody. Uh, so glad you could join us. It's Latin Jazz Power On from the Jazz Power Initiative.
jazz is is a natural home because it's a mix of my two favorite music, really. Um, and that song that I just played was a piece that I composed um, called uh, La Loquita, and it's a tribute to Bud Powell's Un Poco Loco, who's a great jazz pianist. So um, I, Latin jazz for me, it's, it's kind of who I am, and I feel very fortunate to have found this music since I didn't grow up in it like so many of my colleagues did, and it just kind of, I happened into it or it found me, and I'm very thankful for that. So I'm um, also very thankful to have played with Annette for a, so long, and um, playing with Annette has been really cool because I grew up, I grew up, I wasn't a child. <laughs> I came up playing Cuban and Puerto Rican music, you know. Like tumbaos, montunos, dance music, salsa, timba. Um, but with Annette, it's been super cool because I've gotten to play some Brazilian music. And I, Brazilian music is beautiful also, and I didn't have that much uh, exposure to that and experience with that, um, really, before I started playing with Annette. So, um, I'm going to end with a song that I wrote, and I'm doing this because there was a great singer that Annette has, has had, have, she always has, right, you never are not a member of Annette's band, but she moved to Portugal, <coughs> her home country, Catarina dos Santos. So I wrote this song, and these are the words that Catarina wrote, and um, <clears throat> it's really beautiful because it's all about, in the face of uncertainty, you have to take the risk to love and not fear, fear what is coming. So I thought that's pretty appropriate for these times. So this is a song that I call it Sunshine Mountain. My music and Catarina dos Santos, her lyrics. <laughs> My name is Luis Miranda. I am here virtually, honored uh, to be here with you and welcome you all to celebrate the Latin Jazz Power On. Uh, we have supported the Jazz Power Initiative because we believe in the power of Latin music. We believe in the power of jazz, the Arturo of Farrells, the Bobby Sanabrias, people who we remember made Latin jazz famous, and I know that the power of music will help kids and families in these very trying times. Que Dios me lo bendiga.
Hey, my name is Wilson Torres. I'm a percussionist, born and raised in Washington Heights, New York. I'm a proud New Yorker and super proud to be first generation Dominican. The soundscape of the New York City streets and Perico Ripiao a la Costa de Nagua shaped me into the musician I am today. I owe a lot of my uh, inspiration as an artist to my tío Kiko. See, my tío Kiko was a master at this instrument, the huida, and my fondest childhood memories are of watching him play. So and picture this, it's a hot August day in 1983, and my mom's been cooking all day. Yo, we didn't have an air conditioner, ni un abanico, and anyone who's been in New York in August knows how hot it gets. But you know what, we didn't mind though, because my mom was making pernil. Yo, my mom was famous for her pernil. She always gets the crisp, the skin to be super crispy. Yo, and then her arroz and habichuela, the whole nine yards. Yo. yo but you know what, it was a typical Saturday. You know, we had food, family, friends, open door policy. My mom was always making sure people got fed. And people drinking, laughing, having a good time. And like most of these dinners ended with my dad playing the accordion. So, you know, next thing you know, a band is assembly in the living room and us kids running around waiting, excited for them to start playing. And me running to the kitchen, getting some pots and pans, always banging the pots and pans. Used to drive my mom nuts. And she would always say, mira muchacho, me va a romper la baila. But it was all love, you know? And um, then with perfect timing, my uncle walks in through the door and he looks at me and he hands me my first huida. You know, that's a memory that I will never forget. It was like a rite of passage. It was like, you know, an initiation into the family. Um, see, the huida is the only instrument that's indigenous to the Dominican Republic, and my tío Kiko played it with pride. That hot Saturday night will forever be etched in my mind as the day I committed myself to become a musician. I was three years old. Yeah, those, um, those house parties in Washington Heights, I see, them, I see them as the launching pad to my career. And it's taken me from Carnegie Hall to Davies Hall to Moscow, around the world, and back to win the heights. I mean, those memories, they travel with me wherever I go.
Latin Jazz Power On from the Jazz Power Initiative, the Northern Manhattan-based nonprofit organization dedicated to transforming lives through jazz arts education and performance. And we're here with Annette A. Aguilar live in Inwood and uh, watching some terrific dance from Zimena, one of the wonderful artists we work with up here in Northern Manhattan. And you've worked with a lot of dancers, Annette. Isn't dance kind of part of your concept of what you're doing with your music? Yeah, dance is a part of this music just in general. And it's really, um, it's what get the crowds going, the beat, the clave, the rumba, oh. the samba, mm -hmm. the maraca too, the, all these beautiful things. And dancing is great. You know, it's funny way back when stream beans first started, we used to use uh, a, a dancer who did rumba and, well, rumba and flamenco, which because there's a lot of rumor that comes from flamenco, so it's really interesting mm. to play that. And it's um, people in my family are dancers. My sister is uh, was a flamenco dancer for many years, and the after flamenco, and just that music Fantastic. is beautiful. And uh, it's interesting, you know, because uh, Jerry Gonzalez did a, an album with flamenco and rumba, which is uh, uh huh, uh huh. And then you do a lot with Brazilian music. And of course, Brazilian dance is, is a big thing. And dance is such a big aspect of Brazilian culture. But tell us about some of your mentors. I know Mango Santa Maria was an important figure to you growing up in San Francisco. And then he came here to New York and you kind of followed him. Tell us about it. Well, he, he, um, he, he was already in San Francisco because he was here first playing with Tito Puente. But when he was in San Francisco, he played with Jader and he had his own band. That's and Cal Jader, Cal Jader. Cal Jader, yeah. Cal Jader, the great Cal Jader from San Francisco, that West Coast Latin jazz. But Mongo, my brother had a band called Tipico San Fuegos along with John Santos, a, a great uh, musician from San Francisco. And they would open up for a lot of these great people. And one of them was Mongo with uh, Puente and, and so many people. And I recall having a conversation with Mongo because he was he was really into boxing. A lot of Cubans like boxing. And he he knew that my, we had a conversation because my parents are both from Nicaragua and he was a big fan of the boxer Alexis Aguello. So we were talking about this and just his, him and Amanda Peraza and his scene in San Francisco with the sextets that they would have of their group. And I was able to go see him a lot in San Francisco playing all these cool hotels. 
with those great bands and he was very very sweet and but nice. then you came then you came to new york and you 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 i know ray barreto was an important mentor and help kind of set you on the rhythm road and and doing american diplomacy abroad and and i i know you told me that this influenced kind of the development of your band string beans tell us about string beans because we've got another song coming up from you guys in a moment string beans is basically the the title string is strings and beans strings meaning the violins because i'm very intrigued with violins being and beans meaning the, all the beans i ate i was growing up that's mostly like a <laughs> You know, because it's funny because beans are, you can make beans in all kinds of different ways. It is still a bean. So, you, you know, it's, it's like being in clave. You still, it's still a bean, okay? But you can put this on top of it. So you could be Brazilian bean. You could be Nicaraguan yeah. bean. You could be Puerto uh, Rican bean, Dominican bean, Cuban bean, right? Good. I like Cuban <laughs> bean, you know. But what's interesting, my thing with Bray Barreto is like, being that he played with Fania All Stars, I loved his classic recording, Indestructible, Indestructible, which is, and mm. turned out that the band ended up doing a recording with that on our last record. But he was, when I did the Latin Jazz Ambassadors, he was one of the people who were on the panel, and he very support, he supported exactly what I was doing. He was, he was very, he, he critiqued me and said, you did, the, you did great homework, and he was essential Oh, one of the reasons why I got to be, um, went on the Rhythm Road and the Latin Jazz Ambassador on two trips, three trips. And you went, and you went to, where'd you go? Madagascar? Where did you go? We went to Madagascar. We went to Swaziland. Um, we went Wonderful. to Johannesburg. We went to Rwanda. Wow. So all those places. And then back to Inwood, Washington Heights. And thank you for holding it down here in our neighborhood for wow. just about 30 years. And we're gonna hear your band once again, Overjoyed from the Conga Head series. We're so happy to have Annette Aguilar and String Beans on Latin Jazz Power On from the Jazz Power Initiative. Thank you. 
everyone. My name is Annette A. Aguilar, and thank you so much for joining us today for Latin Jazz Power On with Jazz Power, Eli Amen, and all the support from everybody here uptown. But of course, the main topic is about Latin Jazz, and Latin Jazz is something that has been a part of my life for many years. I'm originally from San Francisco, California. However, I moved here to Washington Heights in 1985, and I attended Mahan School of Music, which was in Harlem, but I lived in Washington Heights right towards the end of 1985, and I stayed here, and then I came to Inwood. I've always been an uptown person, always. The, just everything that Washington Heights and Upper Manhattan and Inwood has brought us. However, there's so many great musicians uptown who've lived up here for many, many years and have supported Latin jazz throughout the New York area. And of course, there's so much like a triangle area because when I lived in Washington Heights, one of my mentors who I studied with was the name of Jerry Gonzalez. Jerry Gonzalez was uh, a New Yorkian who lived in the South Bronx, with technically right over by the Yankee Stadium by over the bridge. So when I lived on 155th Street, I would, he would come over the bridge and to come and give me lessons in Washington Heights. So he is a very big part of a pioneer of Latin jazz, along with his Andy Gonzalez, who we just lost earlier this month, April 9th. The, the legacy of Latin jazz is just so part of New York. It's New York. And I was fortunate enough to become uh, a Latin jazz ambassador back in 2003, 2006. And one of my mentors supported me on that journey it was the name of Ray Barreto. Ray Barreto is, was part of the Fania All-Stars. And he really supported me. And uh, I was, you know, just intrigued by him for many, many years when I was in high school. Technically, I'm from San Francisco. And I listened and I used to watch the Fania All-Stars when they used to come to San Francisco back in the late 70s. So I'm so happy to, to share this. And we're all sharing our knowledge of everything that's so part of New York and uptown and all the great people who live here and all the, the culture that it's always been. And people who are uptown, we know the culture has always been uptown in northern Manhattan. So we'd like to share that with you. But I just want to share that it's um, culture and music. As we know now that we are all in our homes, we know what brings the light in our lives. And it's just part of our human nature to do art, music, culture, dance. Dancing is something that it's so uh, a part of the it just when you dance it's just like a, a moving your soul is moving and it takes you to another level just like music does for me play upright but uh it's not accessible right now the upright and besides my brother jerry madera is going to take care of that all right so um i'm going to play a little something tribute to uh uh the great bobby rodriguez <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so well, that was my little, I started out with uh, a bass tumba, one of the classics in this genre, in my opinion, and in many others as well. Um, it was from a song on an Allegro All-Star album. It's called uh, Guajira en Fa. Basically, like Guajira, it's an F minor. So, uh, and that was a classic tumbao from that, you know, from that, that song uh, written by Bobby Rodriguez. So, uh, I will speak on him. He is a god to most of my generation and and the ones uh, before me. Uh, he basically, uh, he, he was of Cuban descent, born in Tampa and came to New York when he was about seven or eight years old and lived in East Harlem, they call it Barrio. So uh, at an early age, he was exposed to the music of, uh, of the era, both uh, the Latin music and popular music, which at that time in the, I guess in the 30s and 40s was jazz. Uh, and, um, he got he got to see uh, you know I spoke to him uh, you know on various occasions we used to hang out all the time. He got to see those big bands, the jazz big bands. Uh, uh, well, I can I'm, I, he he the, you know the Basie band and all the bands of there, but he particularly he got to see Jimmy Blanton with the Duke Ellington Orchestra in Harlem in the early forties. I think he told me it was the early forties. Uh, he was a teenager by then. By then. Um, anyway, he basically took uh, what what we knew at the time, like Cuban, Cuban, the Cuban bass style, and mixed it with all his influences, being uh, you know the jazz influence from uh, from New York City. But you know, growing up and listening to. Uh, whatever was happening or was playing in the radio and whatever he can go out and see in in the neighborhood and and he uh, incorporated all that into his own into his own thing his own style and basically uh revolutionized latin bass at least the new york and uh, the new york chapter of, of latin bass playing because there's uh you know the cubans of course, they, you know, they invented it. They created that. And Bobby just did a little, you know, he, he twisted it up and, and and put his own thing in it, being, you know, that he was influenced by the sounds of uh, New York and came up with, it, uh, with a totally unique style of playing. You know, uh, for those of you that, that understand theory, it's, you know, as opposed, like most uh, Latin bands at the time were playing, the... The fifth and the root, Bobby would, you know, basically do like walking bass lines in tumbao. You know, he'll play the third, the minor third, the, the you know, the fifth, the sixth, going into the next progression, you know. So, um, really freed up the, uh, what we, uh, the, the, the tumbao, really, you know. Um, so, uh, and that inf influenced a lot of us, plus his soloing. You know, he's, uh, he was very melodic as opposed to, to guys that were playing, um, you know, tumbaos that, that would just basically play like a conga drums on the bass, which is great too. Uh, a lot of guys played that style, you know. Um, Cachao was one of them, you know. He, he used the bass as a drum. And, and then you saw, you know, I mean, you can find videos on YouTube, you can see what he did with the Arco, too. Great stuff. He he was another very unique player, and Bobby was very much influenced by him, you know. Um, so, you know, that's, uh, that's who I'm dedicating this uh, little clip to today. The, the late, great Anastasio Roberto Bobby Rodriguez Osacar. All right, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.
Mi nombre es Luis Miranda. Es un placer estar aquí con ustedes virtualmente celebrando este Latin Jazz Power On eh, que está organizando el Jazz Power Initiative. Nosotros los Miranda siempre estamos con la música, con el jazz, los Bobby Sanabria, los Arturo Faro, toda la música latina y el Latin Jazz que nos hace pensar en la magia que nuestros niños y nuestras familias necesitan en estos momentos tan difíciles. Que Dios me lo bendiga. Karen Joseph and I'm a flutist. First, I'd like to thank Eli Yemen and Jazz Power and Annette Aguilar for inviting me to participate in this fabulous event. I've been performing in the Latin music genre for, let's say, umpteen years. In case you were wondering, the song I opened up with is called Suave. That song was recorded by Eddie Palmieri and La Perfecta back in the day. I remember going to Manhattan Center and seeing that band with George Castro. I was just in awe. They were amazing. At that time, I was a student at Performing Arts studying classical music. I never would have imagined that I would ever get an opportunity, just a few years later, of course, or maybe several. Oh, well, haha, <laughs> who's counting? I never dreamed I would get an opportunity to work with Eddie Palmieri. The first gig I did I believe his son, Eddie, too, took me over to introduce me to Eddie. So I'm saying hello, and one of the first things that Eddie says to me is that everyone at that particular gig that night had come to hear me play. I was speechless. My mouth dropped open. I lifted my hands up, and I screamed. Honestly, I think that was an appropriate response at the time. After that, we laughed, we played, and I became part of the family. And I still work with him from time to time. It's always electrifying on that bandstand with Eddie Palmieri. As for flute players, I spent many hours listening to Richard Eggless and Orchestra Aragon when I was first starting to learn the genre. Of course, I also listened to Fajardo, Kupi, Eddie Sivagon, Pacheco, Gonzalo. If I named them all, I'd be here all day. I remember Richard was playing in a club downtown Manhattan. I believe it was La Belle Epoque. I had gotten a call from someone saying that Richard was looking for me. I was honestly amazed that he even knew who I was. I had planned to go to the gig, but I figured, hey, let me hustle up and get over there. I was a request. Hmm, who knew? So I got there and it was just like a love fest. It was fabulous. All the flute players were there. It was like the New York Flute Players Convention. Dave Valentin, Maurice Joe Smith Sr., to name just a few. We all jammed together and had a really great time. In the past few years, working with Annette has given me an opportunity to play more Latin jazz. I've been inspired by Artie Webb, who remains a really dear and close friend of mine. Cuba Laws, Mary Rivera, and of course, Dave Valentin. I must say there's something really special about my friendship with Dave. When I first met him, it felt like I'd known him all my life. We had a mutual admiration and love for each other. Now I'd like to do one of Dave's signature pieces, Obsession. That will be my coda. And thank you again. I'm wishing you all peace, love, and good health.
Latin Jazz Power On from the Jazz Power Initiative. My name is Eli Yeaman, your host up in Inwood, and so happy you could join us for our first live stream. Uh, what an amazing visit with Karen Joseph, and she's been a longtime collaborator for you, Annette Aguilar. Isn't that right? Oh, yeah. 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 She's a, a great player. She played with the old Chiranga band with Johnny Amendra, and we both played in the Bronx Symphony together. And uh, she's just uh, just a force of sound and a, and a human being. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. And now, um, has she performed on your CDs? I know you have three recordings out with Annette Aguilar and String Beans. No, she'll be performing on the next one that's coming up. That uh, okay. those compositions that you heard there will be some because I'm trying to bring the Afro-Cuban and the Afro-Brazilian. And Beautiful. yeah, I mean, uh, looking forward to that because I love the strings and the flute and the trombone. <laughs> yes, well, we're gonna hear from your trombonist, Eddie Venegas, in a minute. Yeah, um, I'll win. Yes, indeed. Now you've been doing a lot of teaching. Uh, you're very, very involved in teaching young people. Would you like to share something about and a shout out to your peeps in the education world? Yeah, I'd like to give a shout out to my kids up there in the Bronx, uh, up at the Magna Conception Middle School. I'd like to All give right. a shout out, especially the kids at Celia Cruz Bronx High School of Music. Mm -hmm. uh, I was fortunate in the in the beginning years to have a Latin jazz band that we had a great band with uh, the, uh, a great, uh, the brother of uh, Anthony Amante, which was Frank Amante, who played the late Frank Amante. Unfortunately, he passed uh, early age on. And just to think that how important that it is for us to, the Latin jazz thing is to, to keep educating. And one is, is a figure of uh, Anthony Almonte. I had a situation where they both got to play together with the Latin jazz band that I had at, uh, at Celia Cruz at Penny over there. Now Celia Cruz, and in case you're wondering folks, we've got this amazing high school up in the Bronx, Celia Cruz Bronx High School of Music. Its founder is the great Latin jazz pianist, Willie Rodriguez. And we want to say hello to Willie who's retired really? now down in Florida. Hello, Willie. Yes. <laughs> you. He's got a new handshake for us. Have you seen his handshake? Yeah, he, says, yes. of, he says, we can do this to greet one another. <laughs> and uh, what an amazing leader he's been in education and the arts. And his legacy remains with the flourishing of the Celia Cruz Bronx High School of Music. And uh, Penny, as you mentioned, amazing uh, oh. band director there who's keeping their programs going strong. Yeah, she's, she's, she's awesome. And, uh, you know, this is, yeah, I want to thank you, Eli, for just, you know, keeping this, keeping the, the torch going. I know you and I have been doing this for a while and we keep doing that in our neighborhood. Community is really important. And we talked about this because a lot of times we would have small groups and play in the neighborhood just to keep it going. Duo, trio, you know, we like the, I love big bands, you know, this, and there's so many Latin bands all over the city that you can hear. I mean, they're online now. There's, you know, uh, so many like uh, Arturo Farrell's big band, you know, there's their online and, and, and Oscar Hernandez has things online and it's really good. And, and what you're doing here to, 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 to show everybody here. And you, you know, we have our CDs as well. Uh, we do, you can visit it. You know, well, I, we got it. We got to keep the music rolling. We got to keep it grooving. And, you know, for me to uh, get together in these small gatherings, Yes. Um, you know, it, it kind of shows you the heartbeat of the music and, you know, as much as we love the full orchestration, we can do a lot with a yeah. few people. And, you know, one of the things that I've been talking about with a lot of people during this time is how us jazz musicians are actually the perfect, perfectly uh, prepared for this moment as we start to think about restarting public events. They're going to be small. And us jazz people, we don't require 500 audience members. We don't require an arena. We can do our thing with 40 people in a little bar. And we can get things really grooving <laughs> and we can provide sustenance. And I think we all look forward to doing that. Steven, it was wonderful to visit with you and your artists. And do you have a message for our community? Would you like to Thank share you. something? <laughs> sí, I'm going to say something in Spanish. Uh, Solamente Great. le quiero dar gracias a todo el mundo por eh, estar con nosotros, eh, tener un tiempo bonito como esto en un tiempo tan malo que estamos teniendo. Pero gracias a la música y los artistas como Ila y Annette, eh, estamos tratando de hacer algo diferente. 
eh, pero gracias por todo el mundo y que todo el mundo se quede en su casa y se laven las manos, por favor, ¿ok? <risa> y, también, y, y también por la máscara también para poder Exactamente, la sí. Y yo Bien quiero, importante. Yo quiero decir a la gente en el Bronx y todos mis, mis estudiantes allí, con los parientes que no habla inglés, un placer que ustedes los cantan aquí con nosotros. Y Eli, muchísimas gracias a usted también para tener la educación, para tener todo. El Luis Miranda también, mi, mi, mi vecino que está ahí aquí en Inwood. <laughs> gracias, el Lynn, Sue. Yes, so. gracias, gracias. Next time I promise I'll be ready to speak some Spanish. But until then, I'm going to keep it in English. Uh, and I want to thank all our supporters, uh, the Miranda family, Luis Miranda, for your greetings today and your support from your family, the Hispanic Federation, the Northern Manhattan Arts Alliance, a Lower Manhattan Cultural Council, UMED, yeah. that's Upper Manhattan Empowerment Zone, New York State Council on the Arts, and our hero, Andrew Cuomo, our governor, our mayor, de Blasio, and the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, our board of directors, our staff, all our individual supporters, and especially our New York City Council member, Idanis Rodriguez. Thank you so much for your support. And thank you everyone for visiting with us. Please join us on social media. We're Jazz Power Initiative on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. We just started really pushing our YouTube stuff and we've got a lot of wonderful content there for you to check out. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we're also on Twitter, on Jazz Power On. This has been the first live stream event produced by our little uptown organization <laughs> and we're so grateful to our production manager Hani Gonzalez. Hani, beautiful job Hani. <laughs> <laughs> Venezuela! <laughs> just, just like the big fancy organizations she's making us look great and we thank you so much and everybody for supporting our editor Ali. Yay Ali, wow and all the artists yes. for coming through with these wonderful messages from their homes. We'll look at ways that we can rebroadcast this presentation, but for now, we have one more musical share from Eddie Venegas, one of the band members from Annette Aguilar, and a special message from our city council member, Adonis Rodriguez. Until next time, everybody, take good care, and let's keep playing the music. Let's yes. keep jazz power on. Thank you. Thank you. From Venezuela, <laughs> Eddie's got a good video coming up. So, so you kind of use the same technique that you have on, on Paganini, but you know, in here, it, it's more a rhythmic thing as well as melodic, you know. So, so those that connection, Paganini, but mostly uh, Bach and Latin music. It's it's how I sort of treat the violin in those styles, and um, the trombone, on the other hand, is a different story. Trombone is more closely related to jazz and Latin jazz, and in fact, I don't play any classical music on trombone, and um, and in the for, the, in the in this band, Stream Beans, there's a lot of Brazilian music, which is great for trombone. It's one of my favorite things to do, play Brazilian music on trombone. They use it a lot. And for example, in Chega de Saudade, uh, uh, which is one of the songs we do in that band, uh, 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 trombone fits really well, but then I have to uh, uh, sometimes comp on the violin and do the harmony. So I kind of have to put all those stuff together. And, uh, you know, my, for violin, my, um, I could give you a whole list of um, people that have influenced me in terms of the classical world. In the jazz world, Stuff Smith is probably the guy that I look up the most, more than Stefan Grappelli. Stuff Smith is a, a violinist who, who played the violin like he was a saxophone. And, and it was very interesting, the stuff he did. You know, he, he utilizes a lot of classical stuff, but in a really swinging way. And then on trombone, I definitely 
uh, look up to and I still listen to and learn from guys like JJ Johnson. Uh, th probably the reason why I play jazz trombone and then <clears throat> of the modern guys, uh, I had the, uh, the opportunity to play with um, uh, Ossie Melendez, Dan Regan and, and then Mark Anthony's band and, and they just being next to those guys was such a great source of information and, and, and uh, you know, in inspiration. And then, you know, Elliot Mason, who I took some lessons recently and, and whose horn I play, uh, um, also is a big, big um, influence on me. Um, but I tend to listen to other instruments in terms of what I'm going to do as an improviser uh, uh, than mine. And that's something that a lot of teachers recommend. If you're a violin player, don't listen to other violinists playing Latin, Latin jazz. Listen to the guys that uh, listen to a completely different instrument. In this case, the good thing about being in this band is that you look at uh, any of these guys are a source of inspiration and information. So you don't need to go that far when you're on stage with uh, Ruben Rodriguez and you just listen to that guy and that's how you do so many things. He's such a solid, such an incredible artist and has such an experience playing different styles with the top guys. So Karen Joseph as well and, and Ed Aguilar. You know, everybody has their own thing and you just learn from them. And that's the beautiful thing about New York that you, you, your influences are right there next to you. They're, you know, they just, you know, they take the subway with you and then you, you just start playing and that's, that's the person you're learning from. And that's, that's, I, I'm sure it works like that everywhere, but those guys are very special. You don't find so many great people in one place, like here in New York. So I guess Chega de Saudade is how I'm going to leave. I'm going to try to do the melody and some solos on both instruments. Wish me luck.
Thank you to the organizers of Jazz Power Initiative. Uh, you're doing fantastic work in our community, exposing our youth to jazz. And I know that even though everyone is dealing with the coronavirus situation in the whole city of New York, but especially in our underserved communities, by doing this online is a great way to how we showing that we are a strong city, that we are committed to bring art and music to our youth. Eh, queremos darle las gracias a los organizadores de Jazz Powers Initiative. Gracias por el trabajo que hacen. Siempre estaremos trabajando juntos, aun en los tiempos difíciles del coronavirus.